In February 2017, we debated at length in this House and passed the Active Mobility Bill to regulate the use of active mobility devices on public paths and to support active mobility. Prior to this, motorised personal mobility devices, or PMDs, were not allowed on footpaths. There are more than 5,500 kilometres of footpaths island-wide, almost double the 3,500 of roads. The convenience of being able to use these devices on footpaths for first and last mile commutes, as well as for food delivery services, contributed to their popularity and a sharp increase in the population to close to 100,000 today. Over the, over the last two years, we have put in great efforts to promote the safe use of motorised PMDs. We legislated compliance standards for the devices and their proper usage. We mandated an e-scooter registration regime. Working closely with the Active Mobility Advisory Panel, we introduced a safe riding program and reduced speed limits on footpaths. We step up enforcement and through the MyTransport.sg mobile application, obtain regular public feedback on errand users and hotspots. Despite significant efforts, we continue to encounter errand riders who use non-compliant devices and ride dangerously. We catch an average of about 370 offenders per month. The number of accidents involving motorised PMDs continues to rise. There have been more severe accidents and even a fatal one involving a cyclist in September. Many riders have themselves suffered severe injuries, including a few who lost their lives. Singaporeans and several members of parliament have called for harsher measures against errand riders. Others have demanded that motorised PMDs be fitted with tamper-proof GPS trackers. Unfortunately, this will affect their circuitry, making them non-compliant to the UL2272 standard. As more accidents occur, the calls for a total ban on PMD usage get louder. We are not alone in having to revisit existing rules governing the use of motorised PMDs. Last week, France announced that it would no longer allow the riding of e-scooters on its pavements. This followed hundreds of e-scooter-related incidents, including several deaths. Cities have allowed the use of such devices on footpaths as they are non-pollutive, inexpensive, and if properly used, convenient for short intra-town travels. We expected the co-sharing of footpaths to be challenging, but we're hopeful that with public education, PMD users would be gracious and responsible. Unfortunately, this was not to be. Like France, Japan, and many other countries, we have decided to prohibit the use of e-scooters from all footpaths. This will take effect from tomorrow. To allow time for users to adjust, we will provide an advisory period until 31st of December 2019. From 1st January 2020, we will carry out strict enforcement and those caught riding on e-scooter on footpaths will be liable for a fine of $2,000 and or jail up to three months. This ban from footpaths will not apply to those with mobility challenges who ride personal mobility aids like motorised wheelchairs and mobility scooters. The ban will also not apply to bicycles. We are aware that the banning of e-scooter usage on footpaths will impact food delivery riders who rely on them for work. We understand from the major food delivery companies that their deliveries are largely done by motorcycles and delivery vehicles. Less than 30% of Deliveroo and Food Pandas riders use e-scooters. LTA will work with the food delivery companies to allow as many of their delivery riders to switch to motorcycles or bicycles. This move is not a complete ban of e-scooters in Singapore. We will continue to allow them on dedicated cycling paths. We are stepping up the construction of such cycling paths to provide clear separation between pedestrians and e-scooters, as in Amokyo and Tampines Town. 
LTA will be adding dedicated cycling paths in towns such as Woodlands, Topayo and Chochukang. Overall, we will extend the network of dedicated cycling paths from about 440 kilometres today to 750 kilometres later by 2025. As for the fire safety concerns, we have brought forward the deadline for compliance with the UL2272 standard to 1st July next year. We will also be introducing a regular inspection regime to ensure compliance. Out of the 100,000 registered e-scooters, at least 80,000 are non-UL2272 certified and cannot be used on public paths come 1st July 2020. Of the remaining 20%, those which fail our inspection regime will likewise not be allowed to be used on public paths. This will effectively reduce the population of e-scooters on public paths significantly. We are offering owners of non-compliant e-scooters an incentive of $100 if they dispose of their non-compliant devices early. Since the rollout of the scheme on 23rd September 2019 to 31st October, more than 4,800 e-scooters have been disposed. We have decided to extend the early disposal incentive scheme from 30th November to 31st December 2019. We strongly urge the owners of non-compliant e-scooters to dispose their devices early to protect themselves and their neighbours from unnecessary fire risks. Members ask about the sale of non-UL2272 certified devices. Since 1st July 2019, it has been an offence for retailers to display, advertise or sell non-UL2272 certified PMDs for use on public paths in Singapore. Those convicted may be liable to a fine of up to $5,000 and or jail up to three months for the first offence. To date, 12 retailers have been caught and dealt with by the law. We are considering raising the penalties to root out such irresponsible acts. LTA is also studying upstream measures, including import controls, to stem the inflow of non-compliant PMDs into Singapore. Finally, given the safety concerns of motorised PMD usage on footpaths, we have decided not to accept any new application for PMD sharing licences, as the existing as for the existing applications, we will issue a safety directive and LTA will reject them. Mr Speaker, this ban of e-scooters from footpaths is a difficult decision, but it is a necessary step for pedestrians to feel safe again on public paths, while still allowing e-scooters to grow in tandem with cycling path infrastructure. We hope to have members' understanding and support for this new policy. There's no place to ride through this place, right? So I ride it slowly because I'm too lazy to push. It's too heavy for me, right? 也有骑士表示，分不清楚哪些公共走道禁用个人代步工具。我听有，不过也是有一点模糊，不是很清楚。我不清楚，没办法，就是说政府楼下不可以，那很多地方都不可以了。你们要 set 咯，可以诶说挂 line 还是什么咯？对于新条例是否起到阻吓作用，公众也反应不一。没有什么改善，反正越来越多这样，也没有什么做事啊，他们也是不管的，我觉得。呃，我我是没有很大看到很大的改善。啊，是改善很多，速度会比较慢，然后车也比较少。人民行动党市政会表示，两个月的宽限期已过，从即日起将严厉取缔任何违例骑行行为，违例者将面对高达五千元的罚款。当局也鼓励公众举报任何违例骑行行为，好让市政会可以跟进调查。新传媒新闻记者李来玲报道。李显龙总理。